there are clearly areas where the right public policy is not you know, clear and there is no clear uh, source of expertise. But this is where I think uh, you know, uh, the, the, the American solution, the typical American solution, uh, has been very wrong-headed because precisely it has not permitted bureaucrats to exercise common sense. <laughs> Frank, uh, a large uh, and interesting uh, part of your new book is devoted to an analysis of America. And um, interestingly, you find many signs of what you call political decay in American politics. What are, what are some of those signs? Well, let me preface this by saying that uh, I don't regard myself as a declinist in the sense that I think that American civilization is in decline. Uh, I actually think the private sector, which was always, you know, one of the best things about America, is really doing well. And civil society is vigorous, and you know, so there's many good things going on in the United States. We're not today. bowling alone. We're not. Uh, well, that's a complicated issue, <laughs> but yes, I think that we're, you know, we're we're doing pretty well in that yeah. regard. Uh, but the real problem, I think, is in the political system, and I think, you know, in my view. Um, all political systems are subject to decay. One source is just rigidity, where you don't adapt you know, to conditions that gave rise to your institutions. When those conditions change, sometimes the institutions have to change. Uh, but then you know, the second uh, type of decay is the tendency, especially of elites, you know, people with power and money, to capture the system and use it for their own ends, you know, out of proportion to their actual role in society. And uh, I think, you know, particularly the latter, you can see, you know, happening in the United States. Now, does this mean I think the republic is going to collapse uh, in the short run? No, absolutely not. You know, we will, uh, we've gone through worse periods uh, of, uh, you know, political difference in the past, but does it mean that the system is really not functioning up to its potential, uh, there I think you know it's it's. I would definitely say we aren't. Well, what are some what are some of the issues that we're not addressing adequately, in your view? Uh, I think that um, there's a lot of uh, you know points where uh, the power of uh, well organized interest groups to block uh, necessary legislation. Uh, has been pretty evident. The one that really sticks in my craw is the financial sector, mm -hmm. where you had a big crisis in 2008 that was essentially caused by big banks taking on too much risk, uh, irresponsibly doing that because they knew they would get bailed out. And I think the power of the Wall Street lobby is sufficient to have blocked the most obvious way of uh, fixing this, which would be simply to dramatically raise capital requirements. Uh, we didn't get the simple solution, so instead we got this monstrosity called Dodd-Frank that mm -hmm. attempts to do the same thing, but in, a, you know, in thousands of pages of detailed rules that are ultimately never going to solve the problem of banks that are too big uh, to fail. And I think that's just the result of political power, uh, of you know, probably the richest most uh, well organized you know, part of the American private sector using the political system to protect itself. And uh, uh, is there not also though a, uh, a, um, a kind of uh, desire by the state uh, apparatus to, to uh, keep banks big uh, in order to uh, to enlist them in projects uh, of the state itself and to, and to, you know. Yeah, well. I mean, crony capitalism works both ways, mm -hmm. presumably. It, it does benefit business, but it also benefits people in government. But maybe even it, uh, it, uh, it gives government something to do, I mean, to regulate and to think about future mm -hmm. regulations uh, and to think about what to yeah. do when Dodd-Frank fails and so forth. Well, you have to disaggregate, you know, this word state apparatus, uh, I mean, because I think it's really Congress. You know, I don't think that the Fed or the Treasury Department 
particularly enjoy writing all of these detailed rules that they're ultimately not going to be able to enforce, but the real problem is in Congress. Uh, it, it's quite interesting. Uh, it's not necessarily a partisan issue, but there was a moment in the debate on Dodd-Frank where an amendment was offered to actually put a hard cap on the size of banks, which was basically the old Glass-Steagall regime coming out of the Depression, which I think would have been a much simpler solution to this problem. And you know, it was voted down in the Senate something like 75 to, you know, to 10. And if you look at the list of people voting against it, you know, it included conservative Republicans, but also liberal Democrats like Chuck Schumer. Mm -hmm. And you ask yourself, why, you know, why did you get this outcome? And I, you know, you can't prove this. You can't follow a money trail, but, you know, these banks are very, um, uh, these banks are very powerful. So I think it's really less the regulators themselves than the people that write the rules for the regulators, because that's really the source, I think, of, of a lot of the dysfunction. You, you have a, a very high view of bureaucracy. <laughs> well. <laughs> no, you do. I mean, you're, ki you're kind of a defender of it as a, in a Weberian sense, as a rational, legal form of administration that um, uh, has expertise on its side. And, and has the knowledge to do the job if it's allowed yes. to do the job. Uh, well, this is a very anti-Kesslerian uh, point, but yes, I am a... <laughs> uh, no, I, 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 and again, this comes from just my observation of countries around the world where, uh, you know, Americans don't like bureaucracy. We're not terribly good at it, but, mm -hmm. you know, there are uh, a lot of countries that actually have a strong a bureaucratic tradition and where bureaucracies actually are impartial, fair, you know, use expertise. And it's also the case in, in our country. You know, the, the example that I give, uh, spend the most time on is 